Um, she wants to know if you have any plans uh, or thoughts about election reform. She says, I'm so dejected from voting because of the rigging by both major parties and how easily hacked the machines are. And we saw it horribly in California in 2016. Um, thoughts on that? So there's a whole litany of threats to voting rights. And, you know, I always make the point that you don't need a computer to hack an election. One way to hack an election is to get a right wing Supreme Court to strike down Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act to then unleash a bunch of right wing states to enact voter ID restrictions and kick millions of people off the rolls. Right. You can contrive an election result through purging votes and denying people access to the franchise. And that's exactly what's happening today. Um, you know, one of the things this points to is what I describe as a fairly dire and increasingly urgent need to restore balance to the Supreme Court. Now, the U.S. Supreme Court, as I think everybody knows, has nine justices who are appointed uh, for life tenure. The Constitution mandates neither of those things. And so in the 40s, um, and even before that, actually, in the 20s and the 30s, as President Roosevelt was proposing the New Deal at the time to ensure opportunities for working people in the face of the Great Depression, the Supreme Court repeatedly intervened, inventing a constitutional principle, uh, essentially a libertarian constitutional principle, to strike down a whole host of regulations, uh, even as simple as as hours, uh, pardon me, restrictions on the number of hours that bakers in New York could work as a health and safety uh, regulation is striking down those measures as insufficiently burdening this constitutional right to libertarian economics. And ultimately, the way that ended was President Roosevelt threatening the court with the addition of new justices. I, 10 years ago, I wrote a proposal and I favor still uh, the regularization of Supreme Court appointments by fixing 18 year staggered terms for Supreme Court justices. And that's a reform that would reduce and in fact, you know, ameliorate the conservative corporate bias that currently infects the court, while also preventing the institution from being subverted by a replacement bias of the sort that Roosevelt's plan threatened. Uh, you know, looking at the court through the lens of a uh, an independent branch of the government whose independence needs to be preserved, you know, the founders were quite, uh, Hamilton, I believe, in the Federalist, num I need to look at which number it was, 49, I think, talks about the independence of the judiciary as a crux on which liberty rests. And um, ensuring judicial independence by regularizing the nominations process, by depoliticizing the nominations, and and shifting the incentives for the parties at the moment, you know, they, they weaponize nominations by finding these stealth nominees who are as young as they can get so they can be on the court for two generations. And yeah. that's a silly way to constitute a court and, and frankly, a foolish way to contrive jurisprudence. But I think we can do much better and we need to do much better than that.